The history of our world is punctuated with wars, each one bringing with it more ingenious ways to defeat the enemy. World War II was no exception. While no one has yet to unleash sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads, some of the strange weapons of World War II came pretty close. 1. Dog, Rat, and Bat Bombs Humans have often utilized animals to do their dirty work. During World War II, the Russians, British, and Americans all tried to use animals to deliver bombs. The Russians wanted to recruit dogs, and anyone with dog training experience, into the Red Army. One of the main threats was the German tanks, so the Russians decided to train dogs to run bombs under the tanks, bite a release mechanism that dropped the bomb, then return to the ranks. The bomb would then be detonated by remote. Unfortunately for the dogs, none of them could bite the release cord consistently, so the Russians decided they only needed to train the dogs to run under the tanks. The dogs were fitted with an 11-kilogram mine with a safety pin. The pin would be removed before the canine was deployed on its one-way mission. The problem was, the dogs were trained with stationary tanks. As soon as they got to the front line, the noise of the moving tanks and firing guns caused them to be too frightened to run under the target vehicles. The German machine gunners shot the few dogs that did run out at enemy lines. Far more dogs didn't run out into the firing line, but returned to their trainers in the Russian trenches armed with live explosives. Once the Russian soldiers realized what was happening, they shot the returning dogs before they could make it back to the Russian ranks and explode. After this debacle, most of the dog trainers refused to continue with the program and criticized its brutality. The trainers were subsequently sent to Soviet labor camps for their insubordination. The English tried a different tactic. British secret agents were armed with many seemingly innocent items containing hidden explosives, such as soap, suitcases, and bicycle pumps, but the strangest of which had to be the dead rats. The plan was that the rat carcass stuffed with explosives would be placed in the boiler rooms of German factories. Any worker who came across the rat would then shovel it straight into the furnace, where it would explode. Brilliant, right? The problem was that the Germans intercepted the very first shipment of British exploding rats, and so they were all well aware of the latest secret weapon. What the Germans didn't know was that it was the first shipment and that no bomb-filled rodents had made it into Germany. The Nazis then wasted valuable resources trying to hunt down more rat bombs that didn't exist. In America, they had set their sights on ways to strike terror into the hearts of the Japanese in retaliation for Pearl Harbor. Naturally, their thoughts turned to bats. A Pennsylvania dentist called Lytle S. Adams came up with this batty plan. Adams proposed that tiny bombs be strapped to bats that would be dropped over Japan. The bats would fly into any available dark spaces to roost and explode, causing many fires to break out all over Japan. The limited loss of life and the potential devastation caused the U.S. government to start a research project to assess the proposal's viability. Of course, it also helped that Adams knew Eleanor Roosevelt. The program was known as Project X-Ray and not Bat Out of Hell, as you might have imagined. The scheme was not as successful as they had hoped. First, they had to catch the bats, which turned out to be the easy part. Next, they got the teams working on designing teeny bomb jackets to hold the explosives, which they then had to fit onto the bats. The biggest issue arose when figuring out how to deploy the bats' bomb mid-air. At one stage, some of the armed bats were accidentally released, burning down a hangar and the general's car. After the military spent countless hours and around $2 million trying to create an army of militarized bats, another more viable scheme had come to their attention, the atomic bomb. The bat plan was canceled in favor of the immensely more deadly Manhattan Project. 2. Pigeon Power Bats weren't the only animal the U.S. looked to during World War II. When the National Bureau of Standards designed a glider that could carry a 1,000-pound bomb, they just needed to invent a guidance system to steer it and release the explosive. Experimental psychologist B.F. Skinner proposed using trained pigeons. This idea wasn't quite as bird-brained as it sounded, and Skinner had come up with the notion after watching a flock of birds and noted their maneuverability as well as their excellent vision. He proposed to train pigeons to find a target by giving them a pellet every time they pecked an image of a ship or building displayed on a screen in front of them. Eventually, the pigeon could peck at the target 10,000 times in under an hour, 
even when the target was moving. The pigeon's body was encased in a harness, leaving only its head and neck free to move. Skinner's system worked consistently in trials, although the scientists working on the guidance system were hesitant about entrusting pigeon pilots with live bombs. While Skinner's idea was feasible, none of the feathered fighter pilots ever saw action, as the scientists ultimately went with a radio-based echolocation system instead. 3. A Ship-Mounted Mine Launcher For the Sky During World War II, battleships were extremely vulnerable to aerial attacks. To combat this problem, the British thought it would be a great idea to create a minefield in the air above the ships. After all, minefields worked great on land. The idea was that mines attached to parachutes with long cables would be launched into the air. The enemy aircraft would get tangled in the cables and the mines would get pulled onto the fuselage, downing the plane. Unfortunately, the parachutes and their cables stood out and were seen by the enemy pilots, who simply flew over them. The floating mines were then at the mercy of the wind, and many floated back down towards the British ships. 4. Goliath Tanks Although these sound like they'd be giant, the Goliath tank was more the size of a child's go-kart. The idea behind these machines was to destroy other tanks. Unlike the Russian use of dogs, the Germans invented the Goliath, a remote-controlled mini-tank filled with over 100 pounds of high-powered explosives. Nazi controllers would navigate the tanks beneath the larger tanks of their enemy and detonate the explosives. The only problem was that these machines were not wireless. Inside them was around 2,145 feet of cable that was attached to the operator's joystick. The Allies figured out pretty quickly that cutting the cord rendered the Goliath useless. Add to this that the top speed of the tiny tanks was about 6 kilometers an hour, and they became stuck easily. It really makes you wonder why the Germans produced 7,564 of them. Far from striking fear into the hearts of the enemy, the Goliath tanks were nicknamed doodlebugs by American troops, who captured them and used them for entertainment. A newsreel broadcast at the time showed GIs firing up the neutralized microtanks and riding them for fun. 5. Balloon Bombs The Japanese wanted to find a way to bomb America that would be silent but deadly. They concocted a plan to float bombs attached to balloons across the Pacific using the jet stream. From November 1944 to April 1945, Japan launched around 900 bombs attached to large balloons. Called the Fugo Campaign, Japan hoped it would strike fear into the hearts of the Americans. Unfortunately, the balloons were subject to the whims of the wind, and only one would fulfill its deadly mission. Tragically, on May 5, 1945, some children attending a school picnic near Bly, Oregon, saw the remains of one of the balloons. The Fugo Campaign was known to the Americans at this time. But before Reverend Archie Mitchell could yell a warning, the bomb exploded. It killed five children and the Reverend's pregnant wife. Aside from this event, the 300 incidents reported resulted in no loss of life. One balloon did manage to cause a power outage in Washington. Completely coincidental, this power outage impacted the Manhattan Project, which was the largest consumer of energy on the affected grid. The plant was shut down and it took three days for the scientists to get it back to full power. 6. The Vortex Gun and Wind Cannon These wind-based weapons were some of the many Wunderwaffen, or wonder weapons, developed by the Third Reich. The German Ministry of Propaganda promoted the experimental weapons programs to bolster the idea of Nazi supremacy. Fortunately, a lot of their fantastical plans did not come to fruition. One of the many projects was a bore mortar weapon that would duplicate the effects of a tornado and be able to knock aircraft out of the air. The Vortex gun would work by shooting a shell filled with a slow-burning explosive and coal dust. In theory, when the shell exploded, it would create a mini-tornado strong enough to bring down planes. While this device worked well in perfect conditions, its success could not be replicated in the field. Another version of the Vortex gun was the Vincanon which shot compressed air at enemy aircraft in an attempt to destroy them. The wind cannon did shoot bullets of compressed air, and the people working on it reported that it could break wooden boards. But even low-flying planes found withstanding the effect of the cannon a breeze. It didn't help that the size of the cannon made it easy to spot, and those operating it became easy targets. 7. The Sun Gun While the Allies were worried about the Germans developing atomic capabilities, 
the Nazis researched a different idea that they hoped would be the most destructive weapon ever built, the sun gun. Also called the heliobeam, it was the brainchild of Austro-Hungarian inventor Hermann Oberth. The scheme involved making a gargantuan adjustable mirror in space that could harness the sun's rays and project the light and heat onto a specific point on the Earth. Oberth's original idea was to use it to warm cities suffering from harsh winters, but the Nazis had other ideas. They wanted to use the sun gun to burn cities and wreak havoc upon the world, basically like a Bond villain. They planned for an orbiting space station that had the power to incinerate any target at will. The Nazis estimated that the sun gun would take around 10 years to build, although in 1945, Life magazine asserted that the mirror would not have been able to concentrate the sun's light enough to heat anything on the Earth's surface to combustion point. Thankfully, no one has ever tried to prove those critics wrong. Allied scientists came across the plans for the sun gun after the war was over, along with other mad scientist-level stuff like saucer-shaped aircraft that took off and landed vertically and giant tanks that were like battleships on land. The failure of these strange weapons during World War II did not stop the military from trying new things. After the war, the U.S. recruited many Nazi engineers, scientists, and technicians to continue their work for the American Army. UFO sightings have often been attributed to flight tests for new military aircraft, and to this day, the Army still uses trained dogs and dolphins for various military purposes. Should World War III ever break out? Who knows what weird and wacky weapons might come into being? To learn more about World War II, check out our book, The Second World War, A Captivating Guide to World War II and D-Day. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.